first thing that I want to do this hour, though, is to look at an assignment that is due this week. I thought it might be nice for you to know what it is that you're supposed to be doing before you have to do it. Well, no, not tomorrow. Like, you could do it tomorrow, but um, I'm giving you word today. Um, well, it's, it's uh, under the assumption that you like that thing sure okay it's going to take me a while here because the projector has decided randomly to shut itself off um, we'll get things going here in a minute and um, I will uh, you know uh, basically indicate if you like the way your introduction went you think that that's good enough and that it's sort of, uh, of an acceptable quality for a uh, university um, Certainly the ones that we saw, I would say, are well within the framework of what we're looking for. Um, could they be improved? Of course they could be improved. That will always be the case. You could do the best presentation to the point where an instructor would say, that's perfect, and it still could be improved. Yeah. Um, so this is just, this is part of life, it is uh, sort of continuing improvement. But... Um, if you look at your introduction, you think, I've done that well, um, um, then you're probably okay to move on to the next assignment. And then that becomes your top priority. What I'm about to talk to you uh, as an assignment then becomes your top priority. So you could finish it tomorrow. You'll have everything that you need today to work on it. And finishing it could be tomorrow. Um, I need to have it um, by the weekend at least. Um, because I, there's some decisions pending. I need to know where you're at in regard to this product, uh, project um, so that I'm aware of kind of like how the rest of your uh, semester is going to proceed. It's not like, uh, it's, it's not earth shattering from the standpoint of other assignments that you do. Like Mark is already, we already know Mark's doing his demo on the trumpet. You know, we already know that simply because it's such a cool thing. I have, I've had lots of demos done, and I've never had anybody do a demo on a trumpet, okay? So, good to, good to do, yeah. I mean, you may have something you think, I would really like to go with this because it's better. It's something I'm more interested in or something like that, but I think it would be kind of cool to say, I haven't played this since I was in high school. Let's see what I can do. And just, and just do it. The point is, you know, you get asked to do all kinds of demos, Work. But this is not about demos, so we'll come back to that later. Um, for now, uh, one of the things I want you to notice, um, making it a little bit bigger here, hopefully it is on the screen as well, right under introduction is initiative project. Okay? You're going to do a presentation on that. This assignment, students will present a persuasive presentation in video format in which they discuss their initiative project for the class. More information on this assignment will be available online soon. Presentation will introduce the daring thing that the student plans to do in order to achieve a mark higher than a B in the course. Of course, the actual attainment of a higher grade is contingent upon actually achieving the B to begin with, uh, not necessarily in itself an easy task. Okay? So the regular presentations that we do in this course uh, I don't grade them, this was an A, this was a B, this was a C. I grade them as, like, as if it were pass-fail. And if you pass all the basic assignments in the course, you get a B. Okay? So at the, in, in the very first week, I asked you, what are you going to do to get a grade higher than a B? What is your project for the course? And in this particular presentation, what you're going to provide is a persuasive case. You're going to propose your project. Okay, and you're going to propose um, both what you're doing, uh, and you might want to take this down. I'll, I'll be adding to this and try to get all of this, uh, this in the way of details, but Emma's going to take notes for me so that I get it right, and then I, when I post it, she can say, you forgot this. That actually helps me. That's a good thing, okay? Um, or insanity is hereditary. You get it from your students. Um, Anyway, um, so what you want to do is you want to you want to say what the project is. Now, when I say this, 
please don't just start in with the body. Please make sure that you have a proper introduction, that you contextualize this. So some, some kinds of information that are relevant to the introduction of what you're doing are things like, uh, I was asked to indicate how I'm going to get a grade better than a B in this course. And in the following couple of minutes, what I hope to do is to present several key ideas regarding what I hope to accomplish that's above and beyond the basics, basic requirements in this course. Okay? Something like that. So then you're going to say what the project is. You're going to say why you need to do this project. Okay? What the project is, why you need to do the project, and what the project is worth in terms of a grade. Now, for some of you, uh, I'm assuming that you're, you're saying, look, uh, grade higher than B? Are you kidding? Like if, I don't know if your secondary school was like my secondary school was, if I came home with a B on my report card, I needed to explain to my parents why. I had to explain to my I mean, that's just the way it was, okay? No, you're not there to make Bs, okay? And some of you may be approaching and say, well, there is absolutely no way that I'm satisfied in this course with anything less than an A+. Plus. Well, what I want you then to do is in your description of your initiative project, talk about what it is, why it's important for you to do it, and why it should count for that much. If it, if it you know, if you um, do the project, um, and put in the effort, uh, and you feel like that this is um, this is uh, the sort of thing that would get you a B plus. Then that's what you say. If this is you, you do it, put in the effort, and this is the sort of thing that should get you an A minus. Well, then say that. Okay. Yes. I don't really understand. Like, the, I understand this, but for the. Um, like what the project is? What yeah. are we doing? Like what is it supposed to be? You're doing it during this semester. During this. I know, but it's not our demo that you keep doing. No, no. The demo is a required the presentation. That's that's anything that you see on the assignments page. Let me bring that back up. So basically, like one day in class, I'm like, I have like, my present my initiative project. Um, hold that thought. Okay. Um, let me just first of all say that when we go introduction, initiative project, teamwork, uh, and reading and demo, that those are the basic assignments in the course that will get you the B if you complete them satisfactorily. Okay? The initiative project goes beyond that. In the initiative project, there will be a presentation to the class, but it's not limited to a presentation to the class. Okay? Um, so you could... you. Yeah, when you're when you're ready. Uh, no, you'll exactly. I can tell you tomorrow. I'd be like, I look this up again. Uh, no. <laughs> Hypothetically, what if there were no hypothetical questions? <laughs> Why are there braille dots on the number pad at the drive-up window at the bank? Oh. Why are there <laughs> braille? That's not what I'm talking. About. No, hypothetically, you know, it could, yeah. I mean, there's nothing that prevents you from when you got it done of presenting it. Um, but I'm thinking that it's probably going to be something that will take a considerable amount of time uh, to put together. Don't. <laughs> If you change your mind, you have to redo the presentation of the, of the persuasive part of the initiative project. So yes, you can change your mind, but it comes at a particular cost that you still need to provide a persuasive presentation to me for why this is you know, the, the, the basic uh, assignment. So if, if at some point you decide it's worth it to me to change my initiative project so that uh, I'm willing to redo this assignment in order to be doing what I want to do for a grade higher than a B. That's the trade-off that you have. Okay? Um, it does not have to be a presentation. It should be something that involves communication, if possible, speech performance, that, that sort of thing. 
um, but it doesn't absolutely have to involve like doing a presentation outside of class. It, it needs to be something that you're doing as a project outside of class. Um, so, yes, Elsa. You're going to try to discover Antarctica? I would probably need to have to respond to that on a case by case basis. If if it's really something that's like out there, then maybe what you could do is post it as a forum message and course matters. Say I'm thinking of doing X. Is that too audacious? Is that at the point where you know, like really honestly, brain surgery? As an undergraduate, you really you know, I mean, and it's not saying that's not that's not worthwhile, but I mean, there are obviously uh, it, there are some tasks that are extreme to the point where you could say it isn't reasonable to assume that you're going to get the knowledge necessary to do brain surgery in a six-week period. Okay, so obviously there are some things that would have to be out of bounds, but post them on the course matters form if you think, yeah, but that takes away the surprise. Well, you know, it's like, hey. It's it's going to be neat to see if it if it works if you get the approval and if it sounds good that sort of thing you get the approval believe me that will be surprised enough if you're thinking wow that's cool you really think I can do that you know um, okay so and this it's like the the difficulty that you're having in your mind right now is because the world is so open right okay. So let's let's think about some possibilities, okay? Somebody, uh, you know, what kinds of things pop into your mind? What kinds of things were you talking about last week? As up, what was your thought? Last week I was talking about apples. Mhm. Mm I was talking about apples. Mhm. Mm okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, have you seen the new pinstripe hoodie? Just came out this week. New pinstripe hoodie for Mark Zuckerberg to wear to more formal occasions. They produced a pinstripe hoodie um, because he wears hoodie, t-shirt, blue jeans. That, he's an example of another another somebody who's you know nobody cares how he dresses because he's just got so much money. People don't care. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, but um, to to say that, yeah, I w I'd like you to think through some things. One, are you really going to be satisfied just being the next Steve Jobs? Because I mean, like, what if? Well, no, but I mean, you know, in 2060, maybe they should be saying Steve Jobs. He was an early Alice Gare. You know, he was like an early. Like, like, why do you get the idea that that uh, you know, being re doing something really, really special is like a shadow or an echo of something that happened earlier? Um, maybe it's maybe it's the existentialist in me, but I actually want things to work the other way. Yeah, Steve Jobs two, the better version, you know that kind of thing. Um, Steve Jobs two point the bugs have been removed, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, and, and that's if you look at Steve Jobs enough, you know that people who worked closely with him could see a lot of room for improvement. Yeah, like he was kind of really hard to work with. Yeah, visionaries are sometimes uh, horrible people to be around. Oh well, there's a lot of things that you'll hear. Like and Mark Zuckerberg also has that, you know, as uh, you know, people say, okay. Anyway, um, what other kinds of uh, projects? What do you think? You can, yeah, obviously something related to speech or communication or in some way getting out there and getting something to happen in the world that's, that's a result of communication. What? A tutorial or a lecture, okay. Okay, a TED talk. 
Actually, those guys are not paid. They pay for the privilege. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention to you, Alice, here is um, think about, okay, on one hand, you could be thinking, okay, my project to be the next Steve Jobs before the end of six weeks. Okay. Uh, I would tend to say, okay, that's up there with brain surgery. All right? But the thing is, is to say, given that as a long-term goal, what's my goal within this class? And what would constitute reasonable progress toward that goal? Saying, okay, it's probably outside the, process, uh, the possibilities for a, um, for, you know, it's more of the kind of a, uh, career objective, yeah, lifetime, right. you know, that sort of thing. But how do I move towards that yeah, goal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It could be online communication. It could be getting a movement started. Somebody started flash mobs. Oh, I mean, yeah. Okay, the second person to do something is less audacious than the very first person. But what I'm saying is, in like, uh, to to get something like that going. Um, I ha I've had students, for example, for their initiative project, they formed a social group on campus. Um, in a, a particular situation, I had a student who formed uh, an, an active social club on campus. Uh, for her, that was an audacious. I mean, it was like, who am I to start a new club on campus? You know, but she had a, a vision for what needed to be done. Um, I had another student who thought, you know, what I would really like to do is I would like to to turn around the sort of illiteracy that we seem to be having with uh, preschoolers. So I would like to um, I, I'd like to do something to change. And it, as it happened. She not only got her initiative project uh, happening, but during the summer, she got that going. The person, before the end of the course that she was in with me, the person who was supervising her in what she was doing uh, came to her and said, if you have time, uh, at the end of the summer, we'd like you to continue doing this in the fall and we'll pay you. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Could be. Could be. I don't know. There's, there's lots of possibilities. Um, and, you know, it's just like that was working, like what, she, what this Sarah was doing was working with children. Okay. Uh, another um, student wanted to make some serious progress at working in some social programs. Um, and I don't want to go into too much detail because, Colleen, I don't want to define your project for you, but it was in the area that you talked about having a lot of work experience in. And for her, this was like something that once I mentioned the idea of an initiative project, she knew she had to do it in that particular area because that's where her passion was. And the thing, you want to go with your passion, okay? So, you know. Like you may want to start a program for uh, including, you know, for providing university education to prison inmates. I, I don't know what your, what your um, passion is. I think it should be related to your passion. And I think you should understand that a large part of what's keeping you from where you are now and being able to be working full time in your passion is progress toward that goal to sort of try to figure out what can I do where I can make some serious progress toward that goal, whatever, whatever it is. Um, what other ideas do you have in regard to, um, in regard to an initiative project? That's what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do. What other kinds of things? I'm trying to give you some examples of things that have been done in my courses in the past without being too specific because I don't want you to be thinking, oh, I can do that. I'll just do that. No, I don't want it to be that, that kind of thing. And I don't want to mention too, speci too specific of information because it, I figure if you don't know about it, then you won't know that somebody has already tried that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
You want some time to get together in some small groups to talk about it? You need some time alone to think about it? Where, where are you at? Huh? I think it's pretty straightforward, as is. All right. Well, I tell you what. What we'll do is we'll come back. Um, to, we'll have a little bit of time tomorrow um, to review. Hopefully, by that time, I'll have the, the uh, com more complete instructions up here. We'll basically say, OK, it's not going to be done tomorrow, Emma. Um, the, um, the initiative presentation that you're giving, where you're trying to be persuasive and persuade me that um, you need to, need to follow this as an initiative project, will not be due tomorrow. So when you're saying, OK, how soon do you want this done? I want it done sometime after tomorrow, but we'll try to come to class tomorrow with the idea in mind that uh, a portion of the curriculum that we'll cover will make every, everybody comfortable with, uh, with feeling like, I know what I need to decide, I'm ready to go, and I know how to get the information together that I need to provide a persuasive essay or a persuasive um, introduction, uh, sorry, persuasive presentation. Um, and I can do that on Thursday, Friday, some Saturday, something like that, so that it's done before the weekend. Okay. We'll talk more on that on um, uh, tomorrow and get that solidified. On the grading works that you um, you propose it, and then the proposal, yeah. The actual project is, um, well, it's dependent upon a couple of things. One, it's dependent upon whether I buy in that it's worth the grade that you say that it's, that it's worth. And then the other thing is that you provide me a report at some point during the semester that indicates um, that indeed you have, um, in, you've been engaged in this in a serious enough way where I can say, yeah, you, you proposed it, you carried it out, we're good with that. And then if you've got all of the other grades necessary for the B, then you get that higher grade. Okay? So again, it's not something where I look and say, is this actually good enough? I mean, I will, I will look at it from the standpoint of the proposal. Is the proposal good enough? Is the actual work good enough? And that sort of thing. If I feel like that it wasn't actually enough effort put towards it, it was a nice idea, but you didn't actually uh, you know, if your idea was, uh, say, it would require, uh, uh, say, five hours a week to carry out, and you only put three hours a week in, obviously there's a problem there. Maybe you didn't achieve your goals because you didn't, you didn't work hard enough at it, you know. Uh, and you put in the time, and I feel like the efforts were well focused, and you still didn't achieve the, the goal. That doesn't necessarily have to mean that you're going to get a low grade. Trying something and failing, you determine, okay, next time I'll try again, I'll fail better. <laughs> okay? Somebody do a study, if you're interested in business, do a study of the number of, of major companies, the, the owner, the organizers of those companies, and uh, do a study of that compared to the number of things that they tried that they failed at. It has been said that there's no such thing as success in business um, on your first attempt. A lot of people who have some of the major companies in the world today, uh, their first five companies, their first 50 companies maybe went belly up. Um, and uh, so, you know, you, you try it, maybe you fail, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a bad grade in my class. Okay? Good on that? All right. Ready to move on? Teamwork. Don't pay attention to the dates. Okay? Actually, no, do pay attention to this. Come think of it. I have revised this. Okay, good. So we're good to go. In this assignment, this is the assignment that will be due at the end of the month. And it's a teamwork assignment. So students in teams will present on an approved topic in class. These presentations will be given on the 30th of May. That's two weeks from today. Something like that, right? Two weeks from tomorrow, sorry. Um, at class time. Uh, in order to, present, to complete the assignment and to be scheduled for their presentations, each student must upload a link to the presentation slides their team will be using for the presentation. That's if you're using presentation slides. 
If you're not, then a document that basically indicates uh, the material you're going to be covering, that kind of thing. In addition, students may upload a link to the video recording of their presentation on this page. Now this is because of two things. One, I want the team presentations to be rehearsed. I do not want you guys to be working independently, arrive a day and go, we don't know who, we don't know what slides she's going to be covering because she did all the work in the corner, never told us anything about it, we arrive day one and try and fly with the presentation. Okay? Those kinds of presentations happen all over campus all the time, but not in my class. Okay? So I do not want you to come in to class in the teamwork presentation and try to make it work when you've never done it before as a team. Uh, I can provide in some in-class time that week for rehearsals and that sort of thing, but a video presentation, doing a video presentation of your team presentation ahead of class time has the additional value that if for some reason you bomb in the actual live presentation, we have a video record that we can use as an evaluation tool. You see? It's like a backup copy. Having a video presentation is a backup copy. Now, the one thing that I would say about this is that where I've said may upload, I would be a little more forceful about that. I would say should, in fact, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of putting must in there. Okay? Must upload a link to the video recording of the presentation. The grade students receive for this teamwork will be individual based on their presentation in class, their slides, and their uploaded video. Um, and there's also a serious amount of the evaluation of the presentation that the students themselves provide. Uh, in addition, I, I want you to be aware the presentations that you give are worth, uh, you could say, like an 80% mark. But students also need to fill out evaluations. They can lose uh, some of their marks in the course that would get them that B if they refuse to evaluate other presentations. So it's necessary to have students here. It's necessary to, them, to have them uh, evaluating presentations. And if you stop and think about it, that also allows the possibility that if you know, somebody, God forbid, should get sick and miss that day of presentations, the video records would be a way that they could go through, they could listen to the presentations, they could still do the evaluations so they don't have to lose marks even if they've had in this class. Okay? See how that works? Any comments or questions? Well, you should have lots of comments and questions because there's all kinds of things yet to be covered. So things like what topic are we presenting on, how do we get started, these kinds of things. Um, so the first thing that you should know is that I, uh, because I work a lot in social media, I want you to, to research in social media. Okay? And um, the other thing um, is I want you to be working in teams of three. And um, I don't want people to um, say, I want this whole process to be not only learning how to present, but for some of you, learning how social media works. So those of you who have less experience in social media need to get together with people who have more experience so that the learning can happen in that way as well. And social media is a huge, huge communication tool in the 21st century becoming more and more important in business and professional use, uh, literally as we speak, um, pardon the pun. Um, but um, what you will be doing is you'll be looking at ways that the social media are specifically used for professional purposes. Okay? So you're not looking at you know, what kinds of social networks are formed on Facebook. Okay. That's an interesting topic and I put a course proposal. If it goes through, we'll have a, a 3,000 or 4,000 level seminar course called Digital Cultures in which we'll actually look at how uh, online groups form, the kinds of um, values that they have, the sorts of exclusionary moves that they make when they vote somebody off the island or you know, kick them out of their social group, 
uh, when couples break up over Facebook, you know, those kinds of things. We'll be looking at those kinds of dynamics and, and all kinds of stuff like that. That's another course. That's not what I want this assignment to be about. I want this assignment essentially to be looking at how social, and, uh, how social media is being used uh, for business and professional purposes. So people who are either trying to build a business online by the use of Google+, Plus, uh, by use of, what, what are some other social media tools? You mentioned Facebook and Google+. Plus. What else is out there? Twitter, huge, huge business and professional impact. Um, so, and I mentioned first day of class. Didn't I mention this? That you guys could be sitting in a lecture hall 250 people in the lecture hall and you got your group and you decide what your hashtag is going to be and you use the Twitter, um, you use Twitter in the background to make comments. Uh, somebody didn't understand part of the lecture so you ask a question on Twitter. Somebody else understood that part and they give an answer and the, the, whoever's doing the lecturing doesn't have to be interrupted. Exactly that kind of uh, use uh, was a major part of that conference I was at two weeks ago. We went into every session, and if you were on Twitter, we had a like a BC Net Twitter feed um, that was up, and basically somebody would say the hashtag for this session is, and we give the hashtag. You can start following that, and you can follow the dialogue and discussion being used as a back channel during this meeting. Alia Ramadan, uh, the uh, uh, traffic weather forecaster for CBC Radio out of Kelowna uses Twitter um, and basically everybody within the sound of her voice, they send her tweets if there's an accident that hasn't been reported yet. They send her tweets if they don't have a temperature yet reported for Revelstoke, but somebody's living in Revelstoke, they tweet her, you know, it's 14 part of cloudy here. She, she uses this all the time to supplement the information that she gets over the wire, you might say. Um, Twitter's a huge, what else is, what else is big? Facebook, Google+, Twitter, hmm? LinkedIn, Facebook for business, professional use, yeah, huge area. What else? No? Anybody use Pinterest? Pinterest is coming uh, up as a way of of tagging photos. It used to be like Flickr, but Flickr has sort of waned. Flickr is, uh, is possibly, it's too soon to tell, whether Flickr is the Facebook or the MySpace of the social media world. Um, Pinterest might become the Facebook of the, of the social media graphic world. We don't know, but what other kinds of, I haven't mentioned a huge one out there. Huge, huge social media area for that businesses are using. YouTube, yes, YouTube, yeah. Because and what you might have missed uh, because you were thinking text, but in fact it's not limited to text in terms of the way businesses and enterprise are using social media. So you look at Coca Cola's channel on YouTube. You can look at. The Valley's restaurant on YouTube, you know, people will have, um, they put videos of the kinds of services that they provide for, um, you know, people to see, oh, that's what the smorgasbord looks like, that sushi bar, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and they post it on YouTube so that people can see what they're um, signing up for, you might say, before they go. Um, Another area that hasn't been mentioned because it's uh, it's kind of old for most of you. It's sort of old news, so that that's the area of blogging. Um, blogs. Uh, a lot of you will be aware that something like 85% of the blogs written have never been read by anybody other than the author. And if you think that's sad, there's a uh, there's a YouTube video you should watch. Seth Godin and Tom Peters. Uh, why you should blog. Um, because it's not about, it's not about I'm blogging so I can get views. It's I'm blogging so I can learn how to write. And it's about, it doesn't matter whether you actually have, actually have anybody reading it or not. Um, however, there are also people who blog and that's the only job they've got. 
they're bloggers. They they work for my uh, uh, the in sort of my my sample my poster child for blogging. David Pogue is a blogger for the New York Times. He also writes freelance, uh, you know, for newspapers and such as that. But the point is, is that New York Times has a staff of people who work full time just blogging. He's their technology blogger, so he blogs when there's a new version of iPhone that comes out. Uh, Apple gives him <laughs> an iPhone through the. That's how prominent he is in the area of blogging. Um, there are new moms that have started blogs that have gone viral, where you know, like they've got uh, you know two million readers of their blog regularly because they're blogging. They're just blogging about their experiences as young mothers, you know, and going around trying to find a support network and various things of this sort. Uh, and blogging is a huge, huge issue. We'll look at some things like that over. Uh, probably again come back tomorrow and look at um, the um, the sort of social media. What we'll need to have is groups of three, and we will also for we'll form the groups of three uh, tomorrow. Um, and so you can be thinking. Uh, one of the things that I would suggest is if you've got a professional, a particular professional interest now. For example, Mark, I don't know of anybody else in class that has indicated uh, an interest in sociology. Okay, but that uh, you know, I'll just use that as an example of an interest. If there are other people who think, if we were to do some stuff on how social media is used in terms of sociology and how sociologists are using it uh, to further their career as a sociologist, if there was a group of three that was looking at that particular topic. That would be like a, a case in point. There were three people that were interested in psychology, or three people that were, you know, going to be accountants, or you know, just different kinds of professional uh, sorts of interests that you have, and you can kind of gather some teams around those interests. And I think it will work really well because you'll be able to look specifically at how people in the field that you're planning to to go into are actually already using social media. Okay. Um, so last semester I had somebody who was quite interested. I actually had three people in class that were quite interested in finding out how uh, local people were using social media in um, rodeo and ranching and equestrian kinds of things. And ultimately they came to the conclusion that they aren't. Um, <laughs> uh, at least the, the more established businesses here locally. Uh, they talked to one individual who, in fact, said, "You know, that's the furthest thing that I would ever do. I want my business to be organized face to face." So it's not like you. I, I'm not making the claim that absolutely every possible career that's out there is going to be engaged in social media. Just 99.9999 repeating percent. Okay. Questions. So that will be something that we'll look at tomorrow. You'll, uh, the groups will probably form tomorrow. So if you're expecting not to be here, you probably should. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of time. We've got uh, a little bit of time left when you can kind of touch base either with me or with somebody else to make sure that you're not missed if you have to be gone tomorrow. If you um, are able to make it, one of the reasons that I'm not starting to form the groups today is because I know that there are people missing today who are going to be watching this on uh, recording. And so they'll come to Wednesday's class ready to form groups. And we'll hold off on the actual formation of that. Not, not hearing, not seeing a lot of uh, hands for questions. I'm going to go ahead and end this um, hangout. And then I can be available if there's any further questions or if there's anybody who's feeling a kind of a lag with the rest of the course. Thank mm -hmm.